Hey y'all, let's chat. All right, so we here to talk about the ultimatum. I had a few people um, tell me that they they would like to hear, you know, my perspective as far as like from a therapeutic side and a personal side on what I think about these dating shows that are coming out. So I told one of my homegirls, I said, the next time a new show come out, I'm gonna jump on it. The issue is, when I watch these shows, sometimes I just want to sit and enjoy it and kiki with everybody else. But when I do something like this, where I kind of like present like a case study almost on it, I got to take notes and I got to get real detailed and I got to put my therapist cap on. I got to really like dig in. So sometimes I don't even like doing that, but I did that for y'all today. And we, look, I'm going to try to make this cool. I'm not going to say quick, but as quick as possible. But baby, I got a lot of notes. Because we got a lot of things to talk about. We had a whole bunch of episodes. I actually thought they was going to play the whole season. And I finally got to episode eight. And I'm like, whoo, okay, they're going to give us a break to kind of process everything. Because I'm like, this is a lot to take in. And it's a lot to like dissect. So we just going to go ahead and jump into this, right? So let's start off with talking about ultimatums in general. And I got my laptop here so I can have, you know, have my referral to what I need to say. All right, I don't miss nothing. Um, so when it comes to ultimatums, I feel like they are, they can be presented as just like really hard boundaries, more so demanding. Um, but I don't think that they are that far off from something that could be a natural consequence, right? So if I say something like, you know, if you don't treat me like, treat me right, I'm going to leave. Um, that's basically an ultimatum, like treat me right. Um, or I'm out of here, but also, um, the reason why it's, it's closer and more, in connection with like a boundary is, is because it's saying like this is what i will and will not deal with um and this is why I, I won't stay around if you continue to act in this way um so it sounds better when you say it like that because the thing about ultimatums is like context matters right so we have a situation where like ultimatums ultimatums can be used in an abusive way um if your partner wants you to do something that you're really against and they, if you'll do it, you'll do it if you love me, you know, you must not love me. I'm not going to be with you if you don't do this. That can, that, that is an unbalanced use of power and control. And so in that case, yes, like the ultimatum situation can be abusive based on that context. Um, but sometimes, uh, ultimatum is just a more demanding and enforceable way of implementing a boundary. So there are some good and some bad that can come out of ultimatums. Um, now, where the issue comes in is in just like a boundary, if you don't stand on whatever it is you're saying, it loses its power. It kind of becomes meaningless. Um, it doesn't have as much value. And people don't take you as seriously if you say you're going to do something, if they don't do something, and then you still stick around. Like, you didn't teach them anything. And we see that from kids throwing tantrums and still giving what they want, ultimately all the way up into adulthood. So, that's just one way. Um, that we can look at how ultimatums aren't necessarily always useful, but also, um, ultimatums can breed resentment when it comes to marriage, right? Like people want the progress of their relationship to unfold organically. And when you don't have that, because you're kind of giving a little bit of pressure or demand to something, it makes it more likely to, I, we call it the, the, here, take this ring. You know what I mean? Like, here you go. Like, shut up and stop talking to me ring. Like, you don't, don't nobody want they, they, they engagement out of feeling like I had to strong arm you into this. It's not a, I don't think it's a good feeling, but I do understand how certain, you know, um, we can call them declarations need to be put in place so that the person knows where we stand, right? Like, I don't have time to waste. I'll devote two years to this relationship. If it doesn't move forward, then I'm going to have to go explore other options for people who I feel like are serious about building what I want to build. Um, but also, sometimes the, as the show revealed, that pressure can be useful. It can be necessary because what we see in the show is that by people getting put under these conditions that makes them more inclined to get to the root of what's really giving them hesitancy, right? Like, is it just that I don't see myself with this person? Do I feel like there are things that this person needs to work on before I feel comfortable? Is it just a matter of we don't agree on a timeline? Like all of those factors matter, but I think that the show did a good job of showing like, sometimes people be bullshitting. Like 
they will come up with excuses as to why they don't want to do something and it's not necessarily the truth it's just coming from a place of fear or anxiety of like what that next chapter is going to look like um so people in this situation they're they're faced they're forced to face their their fears um their thoughts the things that they are hiding behind in the relationship that are preventing them from moving forward okay so that's just the piece on the ultimatum now let's go ahead and move forward to talk about the dynamics of the show which i think are really important so one of the main things i'm seeing people say which was the first thing i thought is these couples are young bro they are they are they're not so young but they are young enough right i feel like when you in your early 20s you still just have so much to learn about yourself your partner is learning about themselves like i understand people get married i know people that got married young you know like I, I i get that it happens but i also think that the issue isn't necessarily how young they are but more so also the fact that they have not been together for an ex for a, a long period of time you got couples that have been together for a year a year and a half i think the longest i saw was like two and a half years you know um and i understand because i think nate is the oldest so nate is 30 and so I understand how he may be getting to that point, but it's also like, you got a girl that's a little younger than you. And you, I mean, men have a biological clock, but it's different than a woman. So I feel like in a situation like Nate and Lauren, he could stand to give her a little bit more time to get to where she needs to go. But we're going to talk about the couples, couple by couple in a second. So that's just what I'm saying. I just feel like ultimatums, I, I, I expected to see older couples on this show because I feel like that's really when it's make or break. When I'm fighting against this biological clock, when we done already had three to five years in the game, like I was really expecting some older couples. So I'd be curious if to see if they spend that um, moving forward on, on future seasons. Because um, I really feel like ultimatums don't really need to come to 30. Like, all right, let's do what we need to do in our 20s. So 30s, we build a stability. We we really going into the things that we want to see in the rest of our life. Um, so uh, one of my initial thoughts was, um, how was it supposed to work being that there are more women issuing ultimatums than men, right? Like, so if the pur purpose is to pair up with these other people, but if your man... Say he not ready because of financial reasons and the rest of these men using the same tone. How is that supposed to change things? But I also see how that kind of progressed because it put into question, is it really a matter of stability or is it just the wrong person? Um, a lot of these guys are still trying to get stable. I understand that, you know, I feel like the issue is, and this is what I challenge men on, is the idea of what it means to be ready. What is that going to look like? Is it an age? Is it a number in your bank account? Is it a certain number of accolades? Like, what does that really look like for you to say, I feel ready for marriage? Because I feel like most men, they, I feel like for most stuff in life, we don't feel ready for it. We kind of just like know we want it and we dive head first into it and we figure it out along the way. Um, but I do think that considering men are the ones to propose in m m most cases, like it's hard waiting on them to figure out in their mind what that looks like and it's even harder if they don't give you a clear picture of what that looks like either um so my other point to the whole idea of the ultimatum is if your partner you know women and men if the woman says you know i want to get married i want to have kids and he say like you know not right now or i need a little more time or whatever and you say okay i'm gonna walk away from the relationship It, it presents a conflict because if you leave that relationship, you do have to start over. Um, you have to date again. You got to find someone worth committing to as far as relationship. And then you got to build with them. So if it's a matter of a, 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 a in, in, if, if the timelines are misaligned, I want to get married right now, but you need another two years. It might take you another two years to find somebody and then date them and then be back in this position again. So I think the women are maybe doing themselves a, a bit of a disservice, some of them, by being so constricted to the right now, because babe, if you go ahead and you leave, you still going to have to devote another two, three years to figuring this out. If you, figure, if you find somebody else who wants to be with you in that way, 
And it doesn't really change your circumstances that much. Like, you could have just gave your partner that time and had what you wanted. You get what I mean? So, that's that's my point on that. Um, and that also brings into the idea of trust. If your partner says, like, give me another two years. Do you trust that at that two-year mark, they're going to do what they said that they were going to do? It's a risk. But also, I think that if your partner is saying, I want to marry you. I want to have kids with you. I want to do all these things with you. Um... You should trust in that, especially if they're not giving you a reason to doubt that, you know. But I also think that, again, men have a, have to have a plan and they have to communicate that plan so that woman feels comfortable enough sticking around for that additional time versus feeling like I'm wasting my time, you know. Or he just biding by time and then two years later, he's talking about he's going to find another reason not to be ready. So that's another point. Um, so I think the whole experiment brings into question, like, do we change for the right people? There were multiple times where we heard the men say, like, I could be ready for marriage if I met the right person. Um, but I also think that what what does that look like? Because even we had Warren who was open about, like, not being sure about wanting kids. And we saw how Kobe was able to talk her through and make it more appealing, make it more comfortable for to, to go really deep and understand what was her fear around that. You know, is it just a non-desire? Are there other components which started to come out in that conversation, right? Like there are other components that are keeping me from feeling fully comfortable with saying like, yes, I want to bring kids into this world. Um, so something else about the whole idea of like, do we change, do we get ready for the right person when they present themselves? I saw a post not too long ago and I, I say this often is, Women go for the right partner. Even if the timing isn't ideal, if a woman found, feels like she found everything she needed in a man, she's going to stick with that man, right? But for men, men operate off of timing. So let's say he dated you three years ago and he wasn't ready, but you had everything that that man wanted. If he wasn't ready, he wasn't ready. And whoever's around when he do feel ready or more stable or secure or whatever, that's who's going to reap them benefits. That's who's going to get that commitment. He's not going to go back to the girl from three years ago, even though she was perfect or whatever, and be like, yeah, I want to try again. You rarely see that. Um, men are very much in the present moment. So that's who they're going to go with. Look, let me get a little sip. I've been drinking ice water lately. I said it's drinking out the bottle and it's been hitting so much harder. Okay. All right, so another initial thought that I had when I when this when the season first started, I'm like, what are the guidelines? What are the boundaries? Like, I didn't know if they was gonna be kissing, if they was gonna be sexing with these other people, you know, because that adds a whole bit more layer. But I figure, I mean, once they made it clear that you are operating as if this person is your ex and you are pursuing a whole new relationship slash engagement slash marriage, then I guess that means you know stuff ain't on the table. But I also can see how that can come back to bite you in the ass later because obviously all of this stuff is aired and let's say that you know them couples walked away with the people that they came with and they all happy and they watching this shit back and they gotta look at you sexing and kissing and doing all that other intimate stuff with somebody else it's gonna be awkward it's gonna be awkward um i personally feel like you know and then another thing i was confused about is like you know, if you get back together with your person, it's all forgiven, all forgotten. I think that they shouldn't have had conversations about what took place with their partner. I mean, maybe eventually you're going to see it on TV. But I feel like the whole idea of like asking like, well, did you do this or did you do that? Girl, you want to break your heart? You want to hurt your own feelings? Mm -mm. Some stuff just needs to be like, mom's the word. We don't need to talk about it. I don't need to hear about it. None of that. I feel like you set yourself up when you get to asking too many questions, all right? Especially when most of them women bought their man on this experience. So, babe, you knew you was giving him the green light to go on here and do with whatever he wanted to do. Um, and then I was like, are they going to be talking to each other throughout the experiment? I did see that some of the couples, the original couples, like, met up and stuff, which I thought was like, you know, at this point, they probably should have just... Ain't no contact, ain't no talking, ain't no texting. Like, that part, I was like, how is that going to work? Because if you living with somebody new, but you still got your old boo, like, I don't, I don't know. Um, another interesting part about relationships is, 
you're always going to wonder what you're missing out on. And I think the show really did a good job of like highlighting that, right? Like it kind of goes back to the whole idea of the 80-20 rule. So if my partner gives me 80% of what I need, a part of me may always be curious about the 20% that I'm not getting. Um, and do I trade my 80% for the 20% that this person is showing me that I'm not getting. Like, that's a gamble. Really, you only have three weeks. So, we'll continue to talk about how, like, you know, this, the three weeks allows you to kind of see most of the time, like, the best pieces of people. You don't really know all of their, their layers and their issues and their traumas and their insecurities and all of that other stuff. Um, so... If you if you if you sit there and you focus solely on that twenty percent that you're not getting, um, you may do yourself a disservice in the long run by going with that because it's always gonna be something about a person that you don't like or that doesn't match or that may be misaligned. So um you you getting this twenty percent, but you do you you don't have enough time to see if they can really give you the eighty. Like that's just something that you would need more time to figure out. Um there are things that you'll see about a person that you, there are things that you won't see about a person in three weeks that will, you will see over the course of some years. So that presents um, an issue like you're gambling with not getting the majority of what you need by growing with that instinct. Um, I think Jake's mom made a really good point about the whole idea of them being in a honeymoon phase in that three weeks. Like you are when you start talking to somebody early on, y'all babbing. It's exciting. Like it feels like the best thing ever. Like. That, that initial chemistry, it'll really have your brain like, oh my God, this is who I want to be with for the rest of my life. But like, you just have not seen everything else that you need to see. So I felt like that was, that it was really um, good for her to call it out. It's like, yeah, you, y'all vabbing right now, but y'all are also still much in, very much in this honeymoon stage. Um, another good point that was brought up in the dynamics is like the idea of acting like a wife with a man before he makes that next step the women bonded over that in conversation right like what i've been doing you know xyz cooking cleaning you know what i mean taking care of business for this man but we're not married and so does that enable him i think sometimes it do enable these men like they always said why buy the cow if you can get the milk for free you know what i mean so that's something else that i feel like as women we we struggle with is like you want to show your best qualities that you you could be a good wife but also not letting a man get so comfortable where he feels like those benefits will continue without making the proper commitment um i feel like the way they set the show up it leaves room for a lot of comparison and we know that comparisons in relationships whether they be to your ex or anybody else can breed a lot of disagreements and arguments um about you know just like feeling less than or feeling like well if you like them so much then go on be with them like i feel like that can get messy because of course now you're seeing everything that you're you've been missing or you needed that your partner wasn't giving you and you're gonna always want to refer back to that um and so let's fast forward to when after after they did their three weeks with the other person, they got back with their original couple. I feel like we could feel the distance between them couples. Like it just didn't, you know, when we saw them in them first scenes when they before they went and switched off and started talking to other people, they were so in love and I'm so about this and you the only person for me. They was just really in it. And when you go past and get into them next three after them three weeks. And they got back together. It's like, if we could feel the distance as the audience, I know them couples could feel like, like, like I've grown apart from my partner or I'm unsure if this is what I want. Energy do not lie. And we felt the energy through the screen. So I can only imagine what it was like getting back with your partner and there being like this weird vibe or it being awkward. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. That's the water. Awkward or like this standoffish ass energy. Um, and really, sure, we started to see people was panicking when they got back together. And that's why, because they could feel it. Like, you can feel when somebody's growing distant from you. Okay. Let's get into the couples. All right. So, I feel like the interesting thing is I think the original couples, they really do 
balance each other out. Most of them are very much like you got one person with a very much outspoken, outgoing personality, and then you got the other person who's a little bit more reserved, a little bit more calm, patient, maybe even mature. Um, the only di only couple I didn't really see that 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 much of a balance with um, is Madeline and Kobe, and I'm gonna get to them because baby, they a whole nother life thing. So we're going to start off with the couple two left. Let's start with Alexis and Hunter, all right? So Alexis is 25. Baby is giving 35, okay? Um, Hunter's 28. He's giving 38. They just kind of an old-looking-ass couple. I don't know. Um, but they've been dating two years, all right? Um, I just never would have thought that Alexis was that young. Um, we see that Hunter is very laid back, reserved, kind of quiet. She's very outspoken. But we see Alexis has very clear issues with rejection. Um, you can tell she gets what she wants majority of the time and maybe the moment she thought that somebody wasn't rocking with her or, you know, she wasn't getting what she, what she thought she started to be messy, um, create problems. And I feel like that could create a problem in her relationship. Like if she can't allow Hunter's voice to be heard or for him to have a say in things and to sometimes tell her no, that's, that's going to be an issue later on down the line. Um, and she doesn't acknowledge and work on that. Um, I think it was interesting that he said if, if he met the right person tomorrow, that he could be ready to get, to be engaged. So like, um, again, challenging men to talk about like what it means to be ready. What does that look like? Um, what's stopping you from choosing the person that's in front of you? What do you need to see? What needs to be different? Um, so their main issue was he was ready to move in. She wasn't. And... I don't think she was, you know, wrong on that. I know some people want to live together before they get married, before they get engaged, you know. And I, I don't think that that's necessarily wrong either. But again, I think it goes back to that conversation of like, do I want to, especially when you know, like me, I am a natural kind of homemaker, especially when I'm in love. Like we move in together, I'm acting like I'm I'm do I'm doing wife duties. I'm making sure things are taken care of. You know that's just my instinct. So if I don't want to go full blown into that or be in a situation where I have to hold back, then I'm hey, I may be wanting people that need to wait till I get engaged so I can feel comfortable stepping into those roles. Um. Uh. So homegirl said if Hunter wasn't making enough money, she wasn't she she wouldn't be with him. Now, I'm curious to see how he feels when he think when he sees that, but also knowing that she's the breadwinner might change things a little bit. Because I do think that it's not wrong for you to want to have somebody who can afford the lifestyle um, that you want and that you've already obtained for yourself. So I know it, it kind of came off bad on camera, but I don't think she was too far off from that mark. Um, she's allowed to have standards, you know, of living that she wants to stay in. So, the gag between Alexis and Kobe. Now, I didn't like that homegirl was trying to change the narrative of what was said. He said, I actually thought when, like, okay, so let's rewind. Kobe told her, shorty, I don't see it with you. And I actually thought he, the reason he didn't is because she made it clear that finances in her lifestyle was very, like, important and it was a priority. And he that wasn't aligned with who he is. So I thought that was going to be the reason. I didn't know homeboy was going to say she wasn't attractive. But I feel like she bit herself in the ass because she should have never asked that man why he didn't give her a chance. Baby, take what he told you at face value and move on. You know what I mean? Like, But you, you wanted to poke and pry and now the man then basically called you ugly. I mean, he ain't say that. But that was the, the gist of it. Um, and... I also didn't like that she tried to take what Kobe said back to Madeline to try to get validation or say like, yes, you, you, your man is not good. Like you shouldn't want to be with him anyway. Like girl, just focus on you and yours. Okay. Let it go. I know that that's who you wanted, but that goes back to that inability to, to take in rejection and move on from it. Um, but we started to see at the choosing ceremony, Alexis did get salty when she realized that like, Nobody really made a connection with her. And she was really worried about what that was going to mean for her this, in this experience. And baby, Hunter came through and saved the day. Came through and proposed. And I actually felt like it was genuine. You know, I, I like the fact that 
he realized he wasn't scared anymore and that he couldn't see himself with another woman and that he was hiding behind um certain you know and you know the whole i need to live with you first or whatever like so he was hiding behind stuff to, for why he didn't want to take that next step and the experiment did what it needed to do look they was both like get get, get us the fuck up out of here i don't blame them because it was about to get real messy um but later on down the line i mean alexis ring was hidden I can definitely tell Hunter wasn't playing about marrying her, so it was good to see that she done already got in bachelorette mode. She already on her way. Um, but what I will say is, based on what we saw from Kobe later in the season, Alexis might not have been too off. Now, she wasn't right about the exact situation, but how she read him as far as some of the underlying issues that we saw come up... Um, she might have been on to something because the motor season went on, the weirder Kobe ass got. So we we gonna get into them um shortly. All right. Let's move on. We at Lauren and Nate. Lauren is 26. Nate is 30. They've been dating two and a half years. They are the couple with the longest skin in the game. Um, Nate is also the oldest guy. So I think it started off really good with Lauren bringing up the idea between a sacrifice and a compromise. Because kids, you can't you can't compromise on that. If somebody don't want them, you're either sacrificing that and deciding that you know you're gonna move forward with your life and not have that and be okay with that, um, or realizing how much you do really want that to be incorporated in your life and having to make another choice with who you decide to today. Um, I, like I said earlier, I think that we saw that Lauren's hesitancy or resistance to having kids had more so to do with their relationship versus just not having any desire. Um, I think that if Nate could work on understanding her more and reassuring her on how he will make certain concessions to be a very present father, whether that be with work or with how he speaks with her about it, you know, giving her more um, comfort and trust that he is going to be a huge partner in carrying kids. Cause we know that majority of the time the burden falls on women and women nowadays are not signing themselves up to be a single parent in a marriage. I don't blame you. I'm not doing it. So I think that's how she was feeling. It would play out. And Kobe was able to give her the reassurance that with the right person, you know, who is just as invested in having those kids because he really wants to be a father, not because he feels like that's what he's supposed to do. Cause I think that's another piece of sometimes people have kids cause they feel like it's what they are supposed to do. But how does, how much do you desire being a parent and raising a child, um, and allowing that child to grow up and be whoever they want to be. Okay. Um, but that issue, you know, they could end up resenting each other. If she decides to have kids without having a certain level of comfort that she needs from him, um, or compromise or whatever that looks like. She gonna end up, you know, being like, damn, I should have never had these kids because this nigga ain't did nothing he said he was gonna do. And if they don't have kids, they could end up resenting her because obviously that's something that he wants. Um, so, I during the choosing ceremony, I initially felt bad for Nate because both of the girls that he liked, I think it was Shanique and... Shanique and... I can't remember. But anyway, his two top picks denied him. And I was like, oh, man, Nate. Because Nate comes off like a nice guy, right? Like, we thought, like, he was very charming, you know, very respectable. Um, but you got to watch types like him because you saw as soon as he didn't get what he wanted, he got real reactive. That, that man was in there like, I'm leaving here with something. Okay, um, he look, he couldn't couldn't get his choice and tried to slide. And I think the whole idea of him making that little comment to Madeline, I'm gonna choose you, that's what really messed up the genuineness behind his proposal. Because you had already made your picks, but they didn't pick you. So had they picked you, you wouldn't have proposed. So let's go ahead and get into that. Because Nate's proposal was purely motivated by jealousy. It was motivated. So much by jealousy. He did not want to see Lauren go off into the sunset with Kobe. That man wasn't even thinking about sacrificing them, the idea of having kids and all of that if the two people that he initially wanted didn't choose him. So I understand why Kobe and April called that out because 
I mean, they wasn't completely off the mark. Now, I do feel like they was a little salty because they whole experience, you know, with the people they wanted to have kind of got swiped away from them. But they wasn't wrong. Um, I was glad to see later on that they talked about that they would do couples counseling because I think that that is really going to be important to get to the root of um, just having a safe space to discuss this whole kids issue. And I'm curious to see if they'll actually move forward with getting married because I don't know. It was shaky. It was shaky. I felt like he going to have to do another proposal because that shit was trash. It was like you, see, you came up behind Hunter and them. It just it ain't look good at all so he's gonna have to try that again okay let's let's get to the mess of madeline and kobe baby all right madeline 24 kobe 25 they've been together for one and a half years both still fairly young um madeline got a laundry list of stuff that she don't like about kobe like anybody watching the season could see that madeline do not fuck with kobe like that there were a few moments where you did really genuinely see her um enjoy him or talk about him in a positive light but also she need to turn the mirror in because she got some issues too, okay? Um, I thought it was interesting that the one thing that Lauren said she really enjoyed about Kobe, which was that he was always positive, is the one thing that, like, Madeline said was so annoying to her. Like, she wanted him to be more realistic. And I understand that there's a balance that comes with that. You want somebody who um, has ideas and can dream, but you also want somebody who can put a plan behind that dream who can actually make steps towards achieving the things that they want in life. And I could see how Kobe could give that part doubts. Um, we saw initially how Kobe spoke about wanting Madeline to lean into him emotionally, but later on in the season, as things unfolded, we, I can see how that is, that would be hard for her. And the reason that it's hard for her to lean into him emotionally is because when she does have an issue or is emotional about something he's done, Kobe cannot take accountability. Kobe is a personality type as some, you know, if you're dating, you have to be conscious of because baby, you saw in the beginning, the girls loved Kobe. They love Kobe. Like, oh, he's so sensitive. He's so compassionate. He's so empathetic. Like you get that, that real nice, like in touch with your feelings type of sense from Kobe. But Kobe is giving like, Damn near narcissistic vibes. And I don't even throw that line around. But the scene of her calling him out about what he was texting the girls. Number one, you already get a pass with one girl. You gonna go out in the club and meet a whole bunch of girls? That ain't right. That ain't right. And I feel like when she called him out and he, you know, left and was acting like he was the victim and then started making himself deprecating remarks. You're right. You shouldn't want to be with me. I'm not worth it. Baby, that is classic narcissistic because you just sat there and tried to turn the narrative so that you look like the victim so you can avoid accountability, so you can deflect. And then you're going to turn around and say, uh, what, where is that? This is what she asked for. Huh? Huh? Now, I know she put you in a situation, but she didn't say go frolic with half the city. She said, go focus on whoever's in front of you and we'll figure this out. But, yeah, so I, I started to feel for Madeline because it's like you want this woman to be emotionally vulnerable with you and for her to see the best parts of you. But when you fuck up, you cannot stand on being wrong. You got to watch out for types like Kobe because um, there's just a lot of red flags there. Um, very much reverse psychology he was trying to do and make her feel bad. Like, and I'm glad that she didn't go for that. I'm glad that she was like, no, this was not for me. You fucked up and you need to own that. Um, he was definitely given delusional for saying he felt like they was in the best place out of all the couples. Like, Kobe, are we watching the same show? Um, and I was actually surprised at Madeline's change of heart, of her saying all of a sudden, like, she wanted to marry Kobe. But we saw that that was short-lived because, baby, once they got back to that dinner, and again, he tried to flip the script. Um, and I never really understood what he was getting at by saying, I did this for you. Like, are you saying, because, like, because you, Kobe issued the ultimatum. So it's not like she did. So, like, I don't know. He, he threw me off with that. And that's what narcissists do. They get you real confused. So you be confused about who was wrong and shit, but it's still you. It's still you. Okay. Um talking about make making her see it was real. Like what type of shit is that? Let's move on. All right. Now we on Shanique and Randall. 
Shanique, 24, Randall, 26, dating one and a half years. Um, again, a balanced couple in personalities, but also presents issues because we clearly see like Randall. I love Randall. Randall is just a good guy. He is calm and mature. Um, and Shanique does not listen to that man. And that's how you run good men away. By not shutting the fuck up sometimes. Sometimes it's women. When you got a good man, you got to shut up. She wasn't, she didn't, she, that girl do not shut up. And that's her main problem. So, I think it was glad somebody called, no, that was another couple of my bad. But anyway, somebody needs to tell Shanique, girl, sometimes you got to be quiet, okay? Let that man talk. Um, but he is so nice and calm with her. Even when he is upset and she going off, he still gives her a little bit of grace. And he pushes her to be realistic and to be logical about the shit. Um... He said he wanted to get rid of debt first, and he's not totally wrong. But again, let's talk about the time frame. What type of debt you got? How long you think it's going to take for you to get rid of it? Can I work with that? Um, I think it was very clear in the beginning that, like, Shanique has certain superficial and materialistic, like, values. And she kind of romanticizes the idea of, like, marriage and a wedding and just the glamorous parts of it. But, baby, what about when the nitty-gritty, okay? Like, we need to focus more on that. And I think that that's what Randall needed to see from her is like having kids and building that life comes with sacrifices. Are you willing to make those sacrifices um, for the sake of building what you say you want? Or does it just sound good? Um, you could tell baby was getting real emotional when she had to let him go out that room, was regretting her decision. Okay, you should have thought about that because now you, you realize that you got you a good ass man and you'd have brought him into this situation. And these other bitches gonna see that you got a good ass man too. Good men hard to find. I already be sitting there on Instagram like, let that girl fuck up. I'm tiptoeing right on up in there. All right. Um, but I do like the fact that Randall was able to own that it might just be him being unsure if Monique is prepared to make the sacrifices needed to have a marriage and not necessarily money or needing to be financially stable. Um, all right. So when the role switched, all right, that's, that's what I'm calling, you know, when they got with their other couples or whatever. No, when they got back with their original partner. Um, first I'm going to say Shanique Diddy look young as hell. I see you, Ma. But I also was found it weird that like Shanique Diddy was questioning if like what's wrong with Randall if he's not ready to marry Shanique right now. Like, yes, yeah, Shanique has a lot of good qualities. I would say the girl is beautiful. Face beat all the time. Hair was done. That's how you do it on TV, okay? She looked good. Uh, but they're still establishing themselves. So I was surprised her dad couldn't understand that from Randall's point of view. Um, I did respect that Randall didn't want to do anything physical with Madeline on TV. You know, she was the one. We gonna, this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop right. Cause Madeline ass, she was so, I could understand how Shanique was getting irritated with her because Madeline was just so, Randall's so perfect. Baby, if you had your man, just say that. But she was like, it was almost giving desperate. Okay. Um, but yeah, I like that he didn't want to do none of that extra stuff on TV out of respect for her. Um, when Randall and Shanique like met up, when they had that little interim meeting um, before they officially got back together, you could really see how she was more, she wasn't listening and she was more upset for what she signed her man up for. Because now you're hearing about the fact that he didn't kiss Madeline. Now you want to be upset. Babe, be realistic. You signed him up for this. You thought he, again, you thought I was going to be sitting, just sit in a corner and be miserable. That's what I wanted. Like, girl, no, let it go. Let it go. You put your man in a situation where he's supposed to act like he's single. He going to act like he's single. Now he did show respect to you because he wasn't doing shit all up in the camera. So you better count your blessings where you can get them. But she's just not learning what her man needs. Um, and he was just so mature about it. And I felt like seeing how he was and the fact that you could lose him, that should have just made you tighten up and get prepared to be the type of woman that that man really needs in order to want to marry you. Like, really hear what he's saying. He ain't saying he don't want you. He's saying you need to work on X, Y, and Z so he can feel confident in moving forward in marriage with you. Um... And look, Shanique gave herself to go all the way just because she heard Randall had a little kissy and a little cuddle. Now, how you going to look after this? Because you was doing all, asking all these questions and now you the one that freaked on Zach. We seen you. We seen you. Um, I do think that at one point it was finally good to hear her ask like what he needed from her. Um, and the last, one of the last arguments they had about like, her wanting, her asking, what does he feel like Madeline needs to work on? 
I feel like the only reason she asked that was because she was looking for some form of validation that Madeline was not a threat to her. Because, of course, he's telling you what you need to work on. But you want to know what the other bitch needs to work on? That's your problem now, okay? Like, you need to be focused on internally getting yourself together for this man and not you you just trying to feel validated and comforted by the fact that, oh, he sees problems in her too, so she can't she not on competition. All right? Um... But I'm just, when it comes to, to what they're going to do on decision day, I'm just, I'm, I'm not sure that Sh Shanique has shown Randall enough growth um, for him to feel comfortable marrying her. I don't know. I, I don't know. All right, moving on. All right, y'all, we getting here, okay? April and Jake, all right? April 23, Jake 26, dating two years. So we know that Jake is fresh out the military, April is ready for bringing a baby. Um, they've discussed how they've invested things in one another, things that a husband and a wife would do. He bought her a car. She got her SUV. She wanted to have her kids in the back, ready to have her soccer mom vibes going on. Um, but early red flag, when they were sitting at that table talking and he started talking about how um, he's he, him dropping everything and giving up everything he's passionate about to make her happy, baby, red flag. Red flag. Because why did you do that, Jake? Why did you do that? So Jay clearly has some issues with like boundaries, probably standing up for himself. And I'm actually surprised because we hear, we get a lot of bad slack about military men, but Jake is really nice. He's really in touch. I, he's, he's clearly, I think he's been taken advantage of in the relationship to some degree and just giving April whatever she wants. Um, but I also think that this is just a, a theory is when you date somebody in the military, obviously it's hard, you know? So I feel like he probably did a lot to overcompensate from for not being there, for the unsurety, for, you know, maybe not having it all because she said she got her own money and it was times when Jake was broke, you know? So I get that. I feel like he probably did above and beyond to prove to her that he loves her for the sake of, like, the voids that were in the relationship because he was in the military. Um... But I don't think he wrong. wrong. He finally out. He want to travel. He want to get a little bit more stable. Um, but she did say something about not wanting to go through another three-year relationship. I mean, Rachel, baby, you only 23. So this is really like your first full-blown adult relationship. Like, So whatever three-year relationship you had before that, I don't know if it really counted as much. It's giving high school sweetheart. Um, but Jake was initially openly professing his love for April. I want to marry you. You the woman I see I have myself having kids with. So in my mind, I'm like, why is she putting the pressure on this man? Like, give him a minute. And then we got to the fertility issues that came up. Um, and I understand how if you find that out as a younger woman, you want to act on that. You don't want to waste any time because you don't want to lose the opportunity to have children. But I also think understanding like the seriousness of it, it's time for you to start exploring your options so you know what your next three to five years are going to look like in the event that you don't have kids right now, you know? So she needs to make herself available of her options instead of pushing Jake to give her a baby right now. However... I do understand her being confused that he constantly shoots the club up, but he claims he don't want to have kids right now. But I also think he takes advantage of the fact that clearly they've probably put two and two together that she had fertility issues because you've been shooting the club up all this time and she ain't never got pregnant. So, I mean, that's a scary idea to, to have to face as a woman. Um, but I, I think it needs to be more about her understanding um, what she's going to do, whether he's in the picture or not, about being able to get pregnant and what her options are. Um, but I, I was finally glad, I was glad to see him finally like call her out once he realized like the beauty he had with Ray and how peaceful it was like that. He said, he, what he said, um, there's never been a compromise about just always making concessions for her and her needing to take a step back and look at like, okay, where do I make room for Jake in this relationship to have needs and wants? I'm in desires. Um, when they got back together, wasn't expecting that whole bomb about her texting dudes and her going through his phone on her, on her birthday. Like, girl, you wanted to kill your birthday by doing that? Why you do that? You could have did. Picked any other day. Don't pick your birthday to go through your nigga phone. Um, 
You could tell when Jake got back with April, baby, Jake's body language, his whole demeanor towards her was different. Like, and I feel like that's because he was really, really, really feeling right. And like, it was kind of like, I don't know. I don't know how to phrase it. Going back to like, let's, it's like when you go on vacation and then you got to come back to your house. That's what it was given. Like, I don't really want to be here like that. Like, um, but I do like the fact that, you know, he was able to take in what was saying to him by his mom and his loved ones. Um, and acknowledge that when he when they got back together, he should have given her more of an opportunity, more been more open versus like standoffish. Because he was very standoffish with her. It just was the vibes was so different. All right. Ray and Zay, baby. Right, 24, they 25, been together two and a half years, okay? College sweethearts. Um, she thinks she got her life all planned out. He's still trying to graduate. I'm hoping it's the master's he's trying to graduate with and not a bachelor's at 25. Well, you know, people had their own timeline. Um, he was also wanting to openly profess his love, wanting to ultimately have kids in marriage with her. Um, I didn't... So, I didn't expect to see her be so closed off emotionally to him. Um, we can understand this later with context, and I'm going to get into that. But I thought it was a huge red flag when she was on camera, and she couldn't say, like, why she, why she, why she loved him, or why she wanted to marry him, or spend her life with him. Like, girl, you bought him here, and you can't say that? So, that was a little off-putting. Um... And he wasn't wrong for saying that it didn't really make sense that she gave him an ultimatum, but she was unable to express how she feels about him. Um, I was really sad to hear about Zay's experience with his lack of relationship with his parents, um, how difficult it was for him growing up and understand. And it made me understand why it may take him a little longer to get the stability he desires, uh, whether it be himself to or his circumstances to work towards having a marriage. Um, but we could see, baby, when they got back together, after they did their little frolicking, Ray's body language was much different towards Ray, same as, um, I mean, towards Zay, same as Jay, you know, because they had their whole little back going on. Um, I thought it was interesting that even though Zay was really feeling Shanique, he got to a place where he said he really wanted to marry Ray. Um, but let's get into Zay's problem, baby. So knowing that, Zay has an insecure attachment style, and it shows up in his relationships. He clearly has abandonment issues from the neglect um, and the insecure attachment that he had with his parents. And that is why we see him be able to act out, lash out when he gets upset. He gets very reactive, um, but also turn around and have a lot of regret behind that. And then not understanding how his actions and his reactions um, didn't get him what he wanted. And that's really what, you know, whether it be avoiding or anxious attachment style, your insecure attachment styles, that's really how they show up. It's like, I want, I'm upset, so I'm going to do something and I'm hoping it'll bring you closer, but it's doing the exact opposite. And now that you are even more distant or you don't want to be with me, I can't handle that. So... Yeah. Um, now we see why Ray is so resistant to open herself up because the moment she says something that Zay doesn't like, he's flying off the handle, and that's not okay. Um, I think that Zay being combative in front of Ray's mama, that wasn't cute. Um, I appreciate that her mom tried to put on her couple's therapist hat and really help them navigate that conversation and and speak for Ray when she kind of was shutting down because Zay was not listening. It's always Zay, 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 what he got to say. But you're not leaving the space open to hear your partner out because you feel like your emotions take precedent over hers. Um, it was interesting to see how them tables turn, baby, because now he's ready to get married, but she's having doubts. Um, I think she was partial, partially emotionally checked out from the relationship because of basking on what she had with Jake. It's easy. And that's what we want love to feel like. Even though it was only three weeks, I feel like their situation was the most easy. Um, and I can see how she struggled after the fact. I did see the breakup coming. He was just, I think they, them taking time apart exposed really what he has to work on. And then there has to be a willingness to work on it. You have to be able to acknowledge like, 
your 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 childhood trauma is showing up in this relationship and it's making it hard for me to give you what you want which is to be emotionally vulnerable because you you can't ta 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 tailor your reactions to the moment and the context um so yes zay baby he got a lot to work on in therapy he needs to go on him and get that that going on so Outside connections and final remarks is where I'm getting ready to go with the conversation. Okay. Jay, Jake and Wright being twins and having a lot in common, very comfortable with each other. Um, it really brings in the question like changing for the right person. Cause I feel like it was a lot of talk about Jay, you know, Jake and Wright both saying they could see themselves leaving here with each other. Um, I think that they are one of the only mixed couples, not like literally mixed, like biracial, but like not with their original partner. I think that they would be one of the only couples to really work out. Um, and I think Ray is going to crash their ceremony and Jake is going to have to make a choice. That's going to be spicy. Um, baby, when Ray, uh, saw that Shanique and Zay was pairing up, she wanted, at that, that she was a ceremony, she looked like she wanted to throw up. I wanted to throw up for her. Like, yeah, girl, yo, they had a connection. Um, I thought the conversation that Ray and Jake had around, like, the whole social media thing with having partners who have an image to maintain and... Having to sacrifice that image, no, having to make sacrifices to their followers, you know, for that image. Like, I don't think that they was wrong for saying, like, yes, you don't need to post your partner every two seconds, but you need to show that you have one. Like, that's a part of providing security. Um, and, yeah, Jake was talking about how he wished the three weeks didn't end. Jake mom did a really good job of addressing not getting caught up in the moment. Um, I didn't like that Jake lied to Ray about what his mama said because his mama was definitely team April team don't get too caught up in this um this is cute for now but you need to remember what you have and he went back and told Ray like oh she thinks you're the perfect person that I need to be with that is not what your mama said um okay uh April and Ray were definitely awkward it was awkward seeing how everybody picked up on the chemistry between Ray and Jake. And, like, they kind of didn't know how to navigate that when all the girls got together. Because uh, the chemistry was very clear. Um, and then you could see how later on when Ray met up with Jake after she and Zay broke up. That, like, he, she was really disappointed to hear that Jake was giving April, you know, a chance to, like, work this out and figure it out. Um, she was saucy about that. I thought it was interesting that April was complaining about, like, the guys wanting financial stability. Like, oh, my God, all guys say the same thing. I mean, a lot of them do. You got to understand, a lot of men's value they place in their financial stability and security. And if they don't have it, they ain't going to feel like they're ready. Um, Kobe and April barely got any airtime as a couple. And, I mean, they was giving boring until they finally kissed. I think that's why they ain't getting no airtime because they wasn't really being intimate. We didn't really see them meet each other people, like... But once they kissed, that, that was on camera. Um, I didn't see that coming. Um, Shanique and Zay got to it real quick, baby. When they was they had their first conversation, they was talking about sexy and all types of stuff. I was like, all right. Um, fantasies and like little innuendo language. I was like, okay, all right. We coming right through the gate. Didn't see Shanique, Shanique and Nate um, going there as far as like they had similar conversations of a sexual nature that would kind of caught me off guard but um again Shanique found out what Randall was over there doing and baby she she set herself up because the thing is is it's it's it, she did it when they had like one night left you almost had, I ain't gonna say the power but almost had all the power in the dynamic to say well I didn't do anything but you went all the way. Now Randall definitely got a, he, he going to be able to hold that right on over your head. Um, cause you went all the way. Um, so the conversation between Zay and Shanique after Zay and, uh, Ray broke up, you could definitely see how he had a lot of misplaced anger. Um, no. So the two conversations, I'm sorry. So we have the one that they had when they were still together. And then, which was after the, the boys and girls night. It was real, that was a really emotional night for a lot of them. And I could see that. Because now you found out about all the shit that your partner's doing. Um, you talking to other people's partners about it. The person who they came here with. Like, very awkward. Um, but 
that was the first time we really see Zay get reactive and explosive because of Shanique's facial expressions. And baby, you can see how they really couldn't work out because they two hotheads. They they not folding. And Shanique was not the one to try that with. Cause she she everything he said, she came right back at his ass. And I ain't blame him because I think Zay, he need to be checked in that way. And Ray gives him passes because she doesn't want to be confrontational or combative with him. Um but you see how Ray and Randall are just a little bit more level headed. Um, and it shows, you know, how they how they kind of balance each other out. But I see why Ray was holds from arguments, just because look at how Zay blew up at Shanique. Like that was a lot. Um, but I did like that he was able to come back and apologize and acknowledge, you know, he, he wasn't right. Um, and then we go fast forward to the conversation after Ray and Zay broke up. And now we see, like, I think it was good that Shanique checked Zay because he wants grace for his past and his mistakes and how they shaped him and how they changed him and his faults. But he's not willing to understand how his actions led to his breakup and how your actions, just because we can understand where you're coming from and why you act that way, doesn't give you an excuse and it doesn't make it right. And it doesn't mean we have to deal with it either. And I think that's the piece he missing. It's like, oh, but you know everything I've been through and why I'm this way and I'm trying to work on it. But like, I also don't have to deal with that. Go work on your shit and then we'll come back. Um, okay, where was we at? Yeah, baby need therapy. Um, Madeline and Randall got spicy on the sex talk too, real quick. I'm glad he ended up fucking her, at least they ain't sure it. Um, Randall, when he was telling her that she should care more about how Kobe was moving, um, and she didn't care, like, Madeline, because Madeline really don't like him. She loved you, and she was pissed that he kept bringing him up because Madeline was trying to get physical with Randall, and he wasn't going. Um, and I thought that that was hilarious because she was really upset that he was not, you know, doing that. And she was drunk. Madeline Drunk is not the person to talk to. And he was being so mature and patient with her throughout that whole ordeal. Um, I ain't gonna lie. I started getting real uncomfortable during episode two when they started talking freaky and getting in, kind of like, you know, more intimate with each other. Like, it felt like I was watching my homegirls niggas cheat on them. I don't want to see that. Like, it just felt wrong. Um, when they was talking about their top pick, shit was getting real. People was getting scared, panicking shaking in their boots um the girls was definitely regretting bringing their gas um throughout this season we saw a lot of feelings of guilt like yes i have permission to go and do these things but i know i'm getting ready to come back to my partner and what is that gonna look like if i if i told the line a little bit um when they had the little girls talk bonding over like what's been going on that was kind of awkward i ain't gonna hold you like i like that april was able to be mature about the exchange um uh, and acknowledge like what she took for granted in her man like i think that's what the experiment is about is acknowledging like what what you what you took advantage of what you didn't appreciate enough um madeline was on the girls next and she was not letting up and then when alexis got with her at the little bachelor party they was both like on 10 and it's like chill worry about your man like but i think sometimes you do need to be called out like that what are you doing wrong but also looking within because you ain't perfect either um it was real for madeline to tell april she needs to listen more shanique was so pissy at madeline's commentary and like again it was almost giving desperate like he's just so perfect like i see why she was blue um i thought it was weird the girls was making a big deal out of the boners like first shanique was like I was kind of flattered because they got a boner with me. And then you got mad when you found out Randall got a boner with Madeline. Like, they're men. They dicks gonna do what they do. I don't know what you're gonna get upset about it for, but as a man, if he buys some booty, he's gonna get turned on. And it's not even like a mental turn on. It's more of a physical turn on. Like, whoo, this is a moment. Um, And the last thing I gotta say is editing definitely be enhancing, like, like when they went to a little wine tasting and all the original couples was back together and you've seen people looking across the, the, the rooms and stuff or like even just some of their reactions. I feel like editing definitely be like enhancing that shit more than maybe what it seems like in the actual moment. Um, but I mean, that's good TV. So that's it. Then my notes. I'm curious to see um, how this pans out for these couples. Um, I don't see Kobe and Madeline. I don't know. If they stay together, they need help, child. Um, 
I don't think it's it's good for Ray and Zay like to try to make things work. I think Zay needs to go get some therapy and maybe it could be re Look, I lost story as soon as I was wrapping up. Okay, I ain't gonna hold with y'all. Um that's it. Hope y'all enjoyed this breakdown. I'll probably come back with a follow-up once we see the couples. Um and what they choose and um i probably won't have much to say then because i don't gave y'all the whole breakdown today so yes be conscious of who you picking out here um don't be rushing to jump to the gun if you are under 26 ish like i mean you have time baby these these people not going nowhere now for real i mean just have an understanding with whoever you date have an understanding of do you all envision the same life together the timeline of that and what concessions you're willing to make so thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your evening.